So we try to uh, we try to pepper the conference with some short, interesting ideas, and uh, we've got a spotlight coming up next uh, that is going to be presented by Melissa Wagner at uh, uh, Zorkin. So GBC Health has benefited over its years from great partnerships with communications firms. And we've recently, I guess, I guess the last three years, begun working with Wagoner Edstrom, which is one of the world's largest independent communication agencies. Um, in addition to the great work that they do with clients like Mercy Corps, United Nations Foundation, Abbott, Microsoft, they also did some great work with us, which is helping us create a social media core. And for the last three years at our conference, we've, we've had a competitive uh, program where we've reached out to young global health students and people getting started in their careers and given them an opportunity to connect with our conference and tap into their social networks to bring these ideas to the public. They're all sitting over there and I know that they have reached through the tweets and other social media postings that they've done so far in the conference a network of over a million individual viewers through Twitter. So, great job, team. Um, so, I am very excited to welcome Melissa Wagoner Zorkin, who is the CEO of Wagoner Edstrom, uh, to share a recent study that they commissioned with uh, Georgetown University on the impact that social media engagement has on engagement and causes in the real world. Uh, Melissa is one of those passionate and compassionate CEOs who walks the talk, and she created a fantastic social innovation practice of WAGAD. So without further ado, uh, let's hear what the study is all about, and please welcome Melissa Wagoner Zorkin. Good afternoon, and thank you, David, for that uh, introduction that's actually way nicer than I am. Um, you know, uh, everyone in this room is here for a similar reason. We are all here to raise our hands and uh, make certain that what we do makes an impact. And, you know, I like to think of it when I think about my own company that we are here because we believe that success, success and the true measure of success is actually in how well we answer the question, to what end do we do everything we do? Now everyone here is already taking action to help solve some of the thorniest global health problems in existence today. And I'm here to remind all of us, and that's every one of us, that we really do need to tell the stories in order to get the most action. And it's the way we do that in terms of engaging, inspiring other people to join us that will really help us be even more successful. And I know that everybody in here has had an opportunity to either dabble or delve or maybe make their life uh, around social media. And I'm here to say that social media is one of the most powerful tools we have in order to spread the word and to involve others. But it's interesting, and, and even this morning I was interested in Baba Tunde's comment. I think his, his very clear and crisp soundbite was, so we have social media. And that's true, we do have social media, but what now? And it's interesting, every day I get a call from some sort of a change maker asking me questions like, so we have social media, what do I do? How do I use it? Should I Twitter? What should it be about? What should my stance be? And that's an interesting question, and I think it needs to be rooted in research. So power, yes but what do we do, where do we start? So we partnered, as David said, with uh, the Georgetown University Center for Social Impact Communication uh, to comprehend and then to determine and find those people really online who really do contribute to social causes. And I'm gonna tell you this in a really abbreviated way, so it's gonna be one of the fastest summaries ever of data that really is good research. Uh, we found out, of course, a great deal, but the, the most important thing are the key takeaways. You know, finding the right people and talking to them, meeting them where they're at is number one. That is the key to using social media. That is the key to success. Also, social media can have and has demonstrated power around really being the um, advocacy for true change if used correctly. And finally, regardless, regardless of the venue that you choose, at the end of the day, it's about a compelling story about some human emotion that you've connected to and really telling that story in a way that draws people in. So the survey. Um, and as CEO, first let me talk a little bit about um, 
social media, CEO of a uh, communications company, you would expect that I would drive social media in our organization. And it is true that 100% now of every plan that we do goes out with a social media component. And, and that's really important. But we tend to, I think, often smear over and say social media is one size fits all. And that's where it gets into why we need research to really understand how do you uh, meet everybody where they're at. It's just not one size fits all. And we need to approach social media with insight first, and then the impact comes later. So with that, I'm going to race through emphasis on race through, four key archetypes that we came up with in our research, and they are as follows. The main streeter, you'll probably see yourself uh, in one of these or maybe two of these. I know I myself have evolved. The minimalist, the moderate, and then the maximizer. Now, every single one of these groups is actually extremely beneficial to a cause as long as we as organizations understand how to engage them and meet them where they're at, what will get them into the mix of caring about what we care about. And so I'll use my brief time with you to go over the four archetypes and just throw out a couple of solutions, things we can do with that insight. So the main streeter. Now this was our first and also our largest group of respondents. Uh, and when it comes to causes, these are people who are very, very active, uh, but they're the ones who actually usually talk to the people that they're most, tr they're most trusted advisors, their friends, their families, neighborhoods where they live, churches where they go to, um, you know, obviously be with their social community or even some of the places that they went to school. So while they're okay with understanding and hearing about a social cause online, that's not what drives them. What drives them is the real world activity. And so it, either it's distrust, it could be that they have a privacy concern, perhaps, I know we all sometimes think about that, or maybe it's just because they're more rewarded by talking one on one. They're not into using social media necessarily to get involved with causes, and yet we feel they represent a huge opportunity if we just work with them where they are at. So given that insight about them, then let's talk about just a couple of things. Each one of these I'll throw out a couple, a couple of ideas about how we can define for them how you would reach them and how to then make certain we engage them. For these main streeters, what you do is you connect the social media to their real world cause in a very tangible and deliberate way. And because of that, they start to lose that distrust because they see that the people they trust are actually aligned with social media. The second thing you do is you make sure that they are your ambassadors. They're the people who you know, go out and talk about this. And so you ask for that order. You give them the means to be part of your story. The minimalist. In many ways, uh, th this next group would seem, I think, to be the least likely to uh, target for engagement around our social causes. They tend to be young, they tend to be unemployed, and they tend to be single. But I might add that's the way I started, young, unemployed, and single. And I'm uh, maybe none of those today. And I know that's kind of where all of you are at as well. And so we have to think about this group with a, a greater generosity about what they can really mean in our society. And so despite what appear to be some early challenges, how do we bring them more into the fold? And they are actually very engaged with social causes, these uh, minimalists online. In fact, almost exclusively, that's how they get involved. And so half will actually just simply like something, but half of them have actually given financial support for a cause um, online. So what do you do with them? How do you address them? Well, first and foremost, you make certain that everything you communicate is clear and credible and simple. Uh, they love content marketing, so if you're into content marketing, which is an important thing for everyone to be part of today, they find legitimacy in this source of, of news and information. And you know, brevity inspires action. And so in their case, they particularly want it like that. And then they will, um, as a result, I think quickly be part of whatever it is you're trying to get them to be part of. They like frequent updates as well. The next group, the moderate. 
nearly one third of our respondents fell into this next group and we believe they also represent an opportunity to uh, drive greater action through social media. Um, and it's interesting that the, they're neither young nor old in terms of the demographics. Moderates actually though more of a description about how they live their lives, you know, balance, that sort of approach. And so they involve themselves offline, online. There's a number of ways that they hear about causes. They're kind of middle of the road people, but make no mistake, they can be very, very passionate people. Um, and so maybe the length and tenure of how they get involved with things is not always as long as we'd like it to be, but they can come around, these moderates. And it's interesting, nearly 60% of moderates have become involved in a social cause just after looking at it uh, online. So the one area as well that the immoderate is uh, or that the moderate is actually immoderate is when it comes to influence. They really like to have the power to influence other people. And so this is a place where, again, you look at that, you think about the inside, and you gear then, well, how do we talk to them? So we reinforce the influence we know that they have. That's the first thing. We make sure that because they're viewed as credible anyway with people around them, we use that, we inspire that, we get them to actually pass information on and be part of what it is we're wanting them to talk about. And so that reinforcement is really important to the moderate. We also, in this case, demonstrate involvement by other people because moderates really like to be belong. I think we all like to belong, but moderates are really the kind of people who like to conform. And if they see other people that they really respect who are really coming into um, this particular cause area, then they will respond. So those are some ways to get the moderate really involved online. And finally, everyone's favorite, uh, I like to call this person the maximizer, not the terminator, the maximizer. Um, while relatively, well, relatively rare, if you have one in your midst, you'll know it. Uh, you will love them, um, and they will be often a source for you of great information. Um, and these people are, as their name suggests, ones that go all out to support whatever it is. In fact, um, our research showed, I think, that there was 12 causes that these people get involved with at a minimum, and they're really involved both locally and, and globally. So this is a group who really um, you need to look at and partner with for greater involvement and motivate them to be that influencer for you. They can make connections if they want through almost any means, and they do it. They crave knowledge, which is you know, so interesting. Uh, I happen to crave knowledge as well. I think I've gone through all of these, by the way, myself. And finally, um, they think that they're smarter kind of than the average American in terms of thinking about you know, the world and the context in which we live. So no question, they're an extremely valuable group for us to um, engage with. And I just boil that one down to make them your ambassadors. You know, Give them titles, give them responsibility. They will take it, they will run with it. They want so much to be part of that. And use video, by the way. These are people who, more than anything else, drive their message through like some of the videos we've seen here, which are, were incredibly inspiring. That's the kind of communications that these, these um, people really are not only inspired by, but take to heart and then come on board and help. And finally, they love to be recognized and they love to be, um, have attribution for the things that they do online. So take their things, retweet those things, and make sure that there's a broad distribution. So I've gone very briefly through a lot of this, but um, I just want to say again that the four groups are the main streeters, the minimalists, the moderates, and the maximizers. And I think if you take them all together, they represent a huge opportunity, but not unless we understand truly the face of the person we're really talking to. And that's what it's all about in great communications. And so I, I know that if we use social media in a powerful way, we have a chance to bring so many more people into this room, into other rooms like this, where we're really talking about how communications can be transformative. And I know that you share with me that that's the real reason we're here, is to make an impact, and this is how we can engage social media to do just that. Thank you, and thank you for letting me be a part of this great conference.